Okay, showing that we are live on my phone. So I'm just gonna give it a couple of minutes to uh, let everybody find us and all that fun stuff. Hi, Heather. Hi, Linda. Good to see you guys today. Thanks for joining me. All right, I hope you guys are having a wonderful uh, week so far. Thank you, Monique. Um, I appreciate that. That's We are going to be using a brand new stamp stencil and die combo that um, we just released yesterday. Hi, Anne. Hi, Malvina. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. And Mandy. Oh, thank you, Linda. I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. Hello, Lori and Emma. All right. It seems like... Um, People are finding their way on over here. So thanks for joining me today. I am excited to share this, uh, or excuse me, to create a card with you featuring some of our newest product. Um, like I, I mentioned today, um, I'm gonna be featuring the Friendship Blooms Stamp Sensel and Die Combo, and gonna have a lot of fun um has been what kind of has been the past couple of weeks I have an idea in mind for what I'm going to do but I don't have an entire card planned out so I'm gonna kind of wing it and we are going to do this together so let's see here I'm gonna have to look on my card here because it looks like chat disconnected on my computer but that's okay um, hi, D. Thanks for joining us and Michelle and Patricia. Okay, um, so someone is asking about if reinkers are available um, for retailers, and they are. So um, you just need to ask your retailer to order them. So, but they are available in our shop too. Um, uh, if you would like to purchase them there. I don't know what's going on with my nose. Um, so we should probably get everything switched around here or we're never going to make it through this whole card. So let me go ahead and get everything turned around. So just bear with me for a minute while I get all of that adjusted. Okay, we've got that flipped around. And I am going to um, let YouTube catch up to me just so I can verify that everything looks okay. Hi, Amy. Thanks for joining me. Uh, for the person that asked about the reinkers, we only recently offered up reinkers for wholesale. So um, they should be able to get them now. Uh, we do not have wish lists set up on our account yet. It is something, or on our website yet. It's something that we are working on. So, um, uh, but it is not a possibility as of yet. Okay, so today we are going to be using the Friendship Blooms stamp set. This stamp set was designed by Alex Siberia. Um, she also designed the known and loved stamp set, which was the wreath one in this release as well. Before I get going, because I always forget this, um, we, of course, will pick a winner of a $15 gift code, card code at the end of this live. Um, Heather will be picking that. So all you have to do is um, share the video if you want to. There is an arrow button with the word share next to it right underneath the video, and you can share that to your Facebook, Facebook page with friends, or you can also share into a group if the group allows it. Um, and then um, also just leave comments as we go. Um, and uh, Heather will pick randomly from the comments. Okay, so it looks like we've had, Di like we've had Diane, Nasheen, Carmen, lots of people joining. Daniel, hey there. Um, Barbara, hi, okay. All right, so let's get going. As you can see here, I have done some of the flowers. So this is what the flowers look like when you ink blend them 
And then when you stamp on top with the darkest shade in our coordinating inks. So that is what we're going to do today. Um, I've already got the pinks done. So today we are going to focus on the yellows um, and that is what we're going to do together. So we will use these um, and I just have them pre-done. So let's go ahead and get started. Yes, I love the fonts in these. These fonts are not exactly the same, but very, very close to the Leah's Ornate and Heather Alpha stamps and dies that we released last year. Um, so, and then of course we've got some of these beautiful scripts. So really great sentiments in our stamp sets, this release, um, very beautiful, very clean and modern um, as well. So we are loving that. All right, so we are going to go ahead and we are going to start ink blending. So when I'm using this combo, I like to ink blend first and then stamp and then die or die cut. So you can really do it in any order that you prefer, but that is my preferred um, order is ink blend, stamp, and then die cut. Um, and I don't have any glitter on the leaves. So um, maybe it's pretty bright in here today. So maybe they, it just got a little shiny from like a, the, the sun filtering in. But no, I actually don't have any glitter on anything for once, which is unusual for me. <laughs> okay, actually, I'm just realizing that's a little low. So let's move that up a little bit a little bit more centered for you guys to see. It was gearing it more towards me versus you. You know, Linda, I am not completely sure what the flower is that these are based on. Um, but they're gorgeous. They could be a peony. I'm really terrible with flower types. I just know what I think is pretty. So I guess it could be based on a peony, but I am honestly not completely sure. Beth, I'm unsure about the after pay payment option. Um, if you could email that question to customer service at pinkfreshstudio.com, that would be your best bet. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our stencils. So as with all of our previous stencils, we have, they are numbered up here in the corner, which I know is not gonna show up very well on the video. Um, and then of course they have the notches, which are um, the exact size of a four and a quarter by five and a half um, cardstock panel. So that is what I've trimmed my panel down here to. And we are going to tape this down. I know there's a lot of different ways to tape these. This is just my preferred way. Um, I feel like I kind of fumble around the other way where you're like taping them from the, you know, from the cardstock to the stencil in the background. So this is the way that I choose to do it. Might be a little bit more steps in terms of rearranging, but it's what works best for me. Okay, so we are going to start with the lightest shade of yellow, which is Lemon Wit. And that is what the um, larger, stencils are going to be. Now lemon, or excuse me, yellows are always in general, just a little bit more vibrant than other ink tones, even in the lightest shades. So I am going to do my best to have a really light hand on this so that I don't go too crazy with this initial round of ink blending. Oh, I'm glad you are loving these new stamps, stencils, and die combos, Maria. I think that if you are new to card making in general, they are going to make creating really easy and really fun for you. And you get the added benefit that, um, yes, you can color in the florals with the stencils, but because we've provided the outline stamp, you can also color in with any of your um, favorite mediums, whether it's alcohol markers, watercolors, colored pencils, really the sky is the limit on that. Um, 
Yes. Um, so I, I only use pixie spray typically if there is a really intricate cut in the dye that I want to make sure like you could, you know, you could accidentally like move it around as your ink blending. Um, that's typically about the only time I use pixie spray, but I do really like pixie spray for those, um, for those times when you have the, um, really intricate pieces. And there actually are some really intricate pieces on these stencils you'll see as we go. Um, and I'll give you some tips for making sure that um, you try, you don't ruin those as you go along. Okay, so there is the first layer, which we have done with Lemon Whip. And as you can see, it's the start of these gorgeous flowers. Such a beautiful start already. So then we're gonna take stencil two and we're going to line it back up with the notches as well. I always like to put a piece of tape on one edge and then use it to help position it correctly on there. And then you can tape it down and you know it's not gonna move. Oh, thanks for checking on that, Heather. I appreciate it. Okay. So this is stencil number two, and we are going to ink blend it with the second shade in our yellows, which is sunshine. So as you can see here, we have, these are fairly intricate pieces on the stencil, and you do run the risk of uh, moving them around. So what I have actually found best when I'm ink blending with these ones is I ink blend gently for one, and I just ink blend, and I, I follow the direction of this way the stencil was cut. So then I'm not going against the grain, so to speak, I guess. And it just makes it so you aren't running the risk of breaking the stencil or um, ruining your image underneath. Now, of course, if you wanna just avoid that in general, go ahead and throw a little pixie spray on the back and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, I didn't want to break out the box and the pixie spray and all of that today. So I'm just going with it as is. But if you fear that you are heavy handed and you might break your stencil, just go ahead and throw a little bit of pixie spray or you could even just use some remo removable, excuse me, removable adhesive. Hello, Marilyn, thanks for joining us today. I see you're on Cape Cod, how fun. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it is like Arctic frigid cold here in Minnesota, which is probably why I chose these happy, um, beautiful colors because, you know, I know I live in Minnesota, but we don't get, the, I don't live in Northern Minnesota. And so we don't typically have these long spells of such Arctic frigid temperatures. So it is very, very cold. Um, so I needed some happy colors in my life today. Okay, so let's let's check out what this looks like. Some have got glitter on here and I'm not sure how. So there is just two layers and our, our flowers are starting to come together. Um, they're starting to have some depth and dimension to them, but we still have another layer. So let's go ahead and put stencil three and we are gonna line it up with those tick marks. Um, let's see, get that lined up. And as you can see, as you go through the stencils, you'll notice that um, you're starting to ink blend just less area. And what we're doing is we are just adding detail and depth to these flowers. Okay, so up next, we're gonna use sweet mustard for this final ink blended layer. And I think I lined that up okay. Yep, looks good, okay. All right, so for this final layer, now these ones aren't as intricate um, as the last one, so you don't have to be um, as, as cautious. So if I were to use pixie spray, the only stencil I'd probably use pixie spray on is stencil number two. Um, and that's just because we've got those gorgeous cutouts in there. And so it's a little bit more delicate than the other ones. Oh, it's been cold over in your area too, huh, Heather? Yeah, it is like freezing Arctic 
temperature here. And normally we get like a day or two of it and then we get relief. And there is like not even any relief in sight at this point. It's just going to be cold. Yes, and thank you everyone for sharing. We really, really appreciate it. Okay, so we are going to do the final reveal of the flowers. Um, so look at how beautiful those are. I love them as is, um, just like this. We are today going to go ahead and stamp the outline on it so you guys can see it all together. But I love these flowers just as they are without the stamping as well. So really a lot of versatility. You can use them with just the stencils, but we're going to take that extra step here in a minute and also um, do the stamping on the top as well. Up next, we are going to ink blend the leaves. So once again, we're going to get the stencil lined up here. Oh, I'm not lining this up very well. I'm so glad you guys are loving the stencils. We are so excited to hear such great feedback from the past couple of releases where we have been doing these. So we definitely love to hear that. Okay, so my other leaves I already did in Ocean Breeze and Aquamarine. So I am gonna do these ones in Aquamarine and Mermaid Cove, just to have a little bit of differing colors between these ones and the leaves that I have already ink blended and, and cut out. Okay, so up first is Aquamarine. Of course, we're gonna blend this first, this first layer with the Aquamarine. And now I, there's not really any rhyme or reason to the way that I ink blend these. I do sometimes try to ink blend from like the bottom to the top, depending upon um, the way that the leaf is positioned on the stencil, but really you can do it however you want to. Um, I like the blending from the bottom to the top just to give um, it a little bit more depth if you give it kind of that ombre ink blended fill. So where it's a little bit darker at the top and then you ink blend it out to be a little bit lighter towards the end. But you can ink blend however you see fit. You can ink blend, ink blend light-handed. You can be a little more heavy-handed. It's completely up to you. And they will look amazing at the end, um, no matter how you ink blend, how you choose to do it. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining us today. OK, so I think I'm good with that initial layer of aquamarine. Get that wiped down. Now I am, haven't been cleaning my stencils, um, but just in case this is, your, this is your first time joining us, when the show is over, I'll go back and I'll grab my stencils. And all I do, friends, is I have a little bottle of rubbing alcohol that I keep on my desk and I just spritz them down a couple of times and then rub over them with a dry microfiber cloth. And that just helps buff all of the ink out of the little places that it kind of pools around your stencils. So um, I'm not doing that on camera, but that is how I clean my stencils. And it works really well for me. And my husband is just arriving home. So if my dogs get a little crazy, that is why. And we'll do our best to calm them down as quickly as we can. All right, so we're lining up this final stencil. And we are going to ink this one up in Mermaid Cove, which is the third shade in our aqua color family. And we're gonna do it just the way we did before. I'm gonna ink blend a little bit darker at the top and blend it down towards the end, towards the other side. And I'm just, this is just post-it tape that I'm using today. Um, I, I kind of just use whatever is close to me. I have been to, known to use just delicate surface painter's tape. Um, I can use washi tape sometimes, just depends on what I have nearby and what I had nearby today was post-it tape. All right. So we are close to being finished with all of the ink blending with this wonderful set of stencils. 
from the Friendship Blooms set. All right, a little bit more down there. They actually um, have, didn't go too crazy. I'm surprised. All right, oops. Get a little bit of that ink off initially. Okay, are we ready for the reveal of what it all looks ink blended? All right, and there we have it. How gorgeous is that? And really, truly, you could leave this as is. I love them ink blended this way, but I do want to show you guys how cool they look when you stamp the outline on them too. So we are going to take that extra step today, but you absolutely could leave them just like this for that soft um, kind of no line coloring fill to your flowers. And I certainly, I know that I certainly will do this card again with the no line look as well. Oh, thanks guys. Appreciate it. I'm glad you guys like this. I, I love how these turned out too. Okay, so I am going to just set all of those stencils aside and I'm gonna grab my Misty real quick. I think we'll, we can get away with using the mini Misty. Oop, this is not the one I want. This is the one I want. Okay, because we are gonna stamp the flowers first and the leaves second. So we will be able to still use our magnets to keep it all in place. Um, but I will, it won't, they won't interfere. Okay, so here is what I have found to be the easiest way to do this. So go ahead and we're gonna replace one flower at a time and we are just going to line it up and these don't have to be perfect just as long as you get the outlines inside of those petals as best you can um they will look great and i apologize if my hair pokes in here and there as i'm trying to line this up okay that let's take a look that looks pretty good all right so there's flower one let's go ahead and get flower number two lined up and then we can stamp them all at once and it just saves a little bit of time stamping them all together yes these colors are definitely like the florida sunshine which funny enough it's sunshiny here it's just really cold <laughs> really really cold okay and then this one is a little bit more interesting because it encompasses both the leaves and the flowers. So I'm gonna do something that I didn't do on the initial run. And we're gonna just do a little bit of masking and we're gonna see how that works out in order to get the flower color on the flower and the leaf color on the leaf. But as you can see, you, can, you have all three pieces, they line up just fine. And now we can ink them up all together. But first things first, we are gonna mask off a little bit of the leaves. You don't have to do this. I really wasn't even actually bothered too much by when I noticed that um, I had colored in the uh, leaf outline on this one when I did the initial set with the flower color really didn't bother me too much, but this is just a way if you can do it, if it does bother you. Um, someone's asking me why I don't use a sticky grid. Um, I just don't like to, <laughs> I guess. I uh, would, I much prefer magnets. Okay, so then we are going to ink this final layer up with marigold, which is the darkest shade in, let's see, I don't really like that, there we go. The darkest shade in our yellow, and give me just a minute, I'm just kind of fussing around with this because I didn't love where that one piece was lining up. And I wanted to change it. 
Okay. Okay, so then we're just going to ink this up with marigold. And then we'll just remove these before we stamp. Okay. All right. Hi, Gwen. Thanks for joining us. Look at how fun that is. It just is a nice little bit of added detail just by stamping that outline in the darkest shade. Now you could also stamp it in black. Um, you could heat emboss it in white or gold. There are a lot of different options that you could do with these. All right, I'm just gonna spritz this down with some stamp cleaner because I did forget to grab a damp cloth today, but that's okay. I can just use a little stamp cleaner to clean them off. Oh no, it's okay. Okay, and so now we're gonna remove these flowers, but we're gonna keep this one because we still wanna stamp the leaves in the coordinating aqua color. So we're gonna remove the two like main larger flowers. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with all of these leaves. So we're just gonna move our magnets now to where the flowers were just stamped. All right, so once again, we're just gonna get these lined up one at a time. Okay. Oh, thanks, scrapbook.com. Thanks for joining us today. I'm getting glitter on things and I'm not even sure where the glitter came from. I'm glad you like them, Gwen. I agree, I love um, how when you layer them up with the stencils and then add that outline in whatever shade, um, I do really like using that darkest shade in the color family for the outline. I just think that it just gives like that nice little added touch of detail. Okay. So then one more time, we are going to mask off this flower. And I think last time I, I didn't mask all of the greenery. So we're just going to make sure I get in a little closer to that. All right, I think we're good on that one. Okay, so we're ready to go. And this one we are going to stamp with Tidal, Tidal Pond, which is the darkest color in our aquas. Hi Jackie, thanks for joining us. I'm glad you could make it today. Um, Lori, I'm not sure what you mean. Are you, what are you asking me will affect the plastic, my stamp cleaner? No, it sure won't if that's what you're inquiring about. Okay. Let's make sure we got nice good lines on there because I don't really want to stamp this a second time. Pull that mask off. Go ahead and get that on here. <laughs> it's Tidal Pond for sure. Close enough though. And then look at that. So we have finished our stamping and it just adds a, a nice little added detail. So I like them both ways. I like them just stenciled with that somewhat no line color feel, but I also love the detail that, um, adding the outline layer adds. So what what is you what way do you guys prefer these flowers? Did you like them just left with the stenciling? Do you like them with the added outline? Definitely share your thoughts. 
<laughs> Not Shane. I, that's funny about glitter. You're probably very right. <laughs> okay. While I'm thinking about it and while I'm here, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take all the leaves off and put them away just so I don't have a big mess at the end of my show. Okay, so that can be set aside. Okay, so now we gotta do some die cutting, friends. Um, I need to find them, there they are. So these are all fairly close together. So what I have found is you kind of have to die cut in parts. So I am going to start by die cutting with um, die cutting out the larger flowers. So as I've shown in past lives, um, I really only did the mark on the two dies. So you'll see I put a little mark right here and a little mark right here just to show where the die lines up. And for me, that just makes it easier to um, line up when it comes time and I'm not having to, not struggling to figure out where to line that die up. Yeah, I think we, I, I think people are all in agreement that kind of like them both, just depending on the mood or the theme of the flower that you're going with. And I put the little dot on this one too. I didn't, the other dies didn't really need it, but it is nice to just have a really fast, quick reference point um, for getting these two larger floral dies lined up. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna run this through my machine. Okay, so we've got the first set of pieces cut out and look at how perfect that is. Just like perfect, a little bit of outline on there. Um, super fun. Okay, so then up next, let's get the tape off these guys. We don't need that as a reference anymore. Because the rest of these pieces all line up fairly easily. Okay, so for the next ones, we are going to die cut the two larger leaves. So we're gonna die cut this guy. And then we're gonna die cut this guy. All right. And I wanna make sure that these won't shift on me. So I do tape them down in a couple of points. I uh, was cutting out some of the first ones and I, one of the dies did shift on me, so. I think I missed some funny comments about something about sequins. I'll have to catch up on the replay and, and figure out what that was all about. I totally missed it as I was lining up dies here. Oops, I hate when that happens. Okay, good. Kind of stuck. But there's one of the great little dies or leaves. And then we will finish up and we will die cut out the rest of these pieces. which are just basically all of the smaller things that we have left here. Okay, now these are gonna be really important to get taped down. I see a little area where I didn't mask very well, that's okay. Okay, um, with this paper being uh, pretty cut up now, you wanna make sure that you um, really do um, tape these guys down or they can move on you. Oh, we're glad that you like that feature. Yes, we, um, 
whenever there are multiple pieces in our dies, we always add a magnetic sheet, a hidden magnetic sheet in our packaging so that um, your dies don't just go flying everywhere when you open them or when you're using them. It is a nice little added feature that we, oh shoot, see? <laughs> that would have been bad because it would have cut really bad. So let's just add one more piece of tape. Okay. See, I didn't even know if there were yellow peonies, but it's fine. Okay, so we now officially have everything cut out and I did a really terrible job of lining up that die. That was my fault, but it still will be usable. And then we've got our two little leaves here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get this part all cleaned up real quick. So I don't lose any dies because that would be terrible. And I'm not saving you any of that tape, so don't really worry about that. Lori, it's only when there are multiple dies. So the enchanted meadow die is just one die. So we don't do a magnetic sheet when there's only one die. But if there, um, if there are more than one die on your thing, we include the magnet sheet in there. So, but when it's just a single die, we don't, we don't do that part. Okay. Oh, interesting. About the yellow peony. That is very interesting. Okay. So I wanted to show you guys something really quick um, before we get going with our cards. So we've got our pinks and we have our yellows. They're all ready and all cut out. But I did want to show you guys something that I did over the weekend. Um, I was just like watching a show, more listening to a show because you can't really watch a show when you're crap, when you're ink blending. But I basically went through and I did this in all of the colors of the rainbow and then did some interesting combos of leaves. So with the oranges, I did brown leaves. Um, with the red color family, I stuck with greens. Um, same with the yellows. The aquas, I did gray. The blues, I went with some pink leaves. The darker blues, I went with like a darker green. And with the purples, I went with uh, the other set of darker greens. So really a fun thing to do if you are in a creative slump or you want to do something creative, but maybe don't necessarily feel like putting together an entire card, grab some of these stencils out, grab out your favorite inks in all of your different shades and just create a bunch of different pieces. And then you can leave them on the sheet and die cut them later and go ahead and die cut them right away. And then you will just have all of these fabulous pieces to create cards with when you are ready. So I just wanted to show you guys, I did that over the weekend um, and it was just really fun. So, and definitely experiment with colors. Um, leaves don't always have to be green. Leaves can be um, whatever your imagination um, lends itself to. So, okay, so we have our flowers and leaves all done. So let's actually go ahead and get our sentiment done. And then we're gonna start putting this card together. I am just gonna grab a little bit of scrap white cardstock because we are going to cut the sentiment down with a, a label frame. So I'm just gonna put it in here. And I am going to use the Friends Make Happiness Bloom sentiment today. Yeah, it is really fun for mass producing, um, doing it that way. And um, I, you know, when I was doing it this weekend, I wasn't particularly in the mood to create an entire card. I just wanted to create something while I was watching some shows. So, um, or I guess technically listening to, to some shows. So, oops, and I am arranging that out of the frame. Okay. 
And I am going to cut this with a label. So I want to make sure that the label I'm planning on using, I have enough white space left. So give me just a minute to make sure that I have left myself enough room. And I certainly have. So we are good to go. Oh, yes. Um, Lori, I'm not sure. You can definitely use alcohol on... Um, our stencils. I wouldn't advise using alcohol on stamps. Um, I have done it in the past when my stamps were super, super covered with black ink, but I conditioned them right away with embossing ink. So, but I would just do, I would just use some stamp cleaner and a soft toothbrush to clean up your, um, any stamps that you feel like might be a little dirty. Okay. So we've got our sentiment lined up. I think I'm going to heat emboss it in gold. I just need to get those items here. So go ahead. We're, we're going to prep it with a powder tool so that in hopes the embossing powder will only stick to the embossing ink and not everywhere else where I don't want it to go. And then we are going to ink it up with some embossing ink. Jennifer, they're actually not the exact same sentiment or font, but they're very, very close. So they are close enough that um, they will certainly match if you choose to use them together. Okay, and I think we are, I might ink that up just one more time. Exactly, Linda. Uh, by doing some mass production stuff like that when you're maybe not totally in the mood to create a whole card just makes it so it's much easier when you are in the mood to create a full card. All right, so that looks good. Yep. Okay, gotta get my little paper. I did not prep for embossing when I kind of knew I was gonna emboss the sentiment, but that's okay, we're getting it done. That I did not cover very well. All right, did pretty good. Okay. Did I leave up? No. Oh, that's that's so nice, Gloria. I like to hear that. Um, my, you know, the tips and tricks that we give you guys. Um, actually help out and work. So I, uh, I love to hear that. So thank you for sharing that with me. Let's just get this guy cleaned up real quick. Okay. I am going to heat set here in a minute. So if it might get a little loud at first, just so you are aware. And so we have our beautiful gold heat embossed sentiment. Let's go ahead and put the stamp away because I am fully done with the stamp set at this point. So we can go ahead and put that away. And the misty at this point too. Okay, so I am gonna use the fancy label frames to cut my sentiment out. I think it was this fourth one. So these are just a really great set of nested labels that are really great for um, adding sentiments to your cards. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this one down, just making sure that the sentiment looks fairly straight on there. I can use up this piece here. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, okay. 
So let's go ahead and cut this one out. So that didn't move on me. Yeah, these are really great, um, just kind of essential pieces. They're in our essentials collection and they're really great for sentiments. We also have um, the basic label frames too. Um, so we've got the fancier ones that are a little more ornate and the basic ones, which are a little bit more clean and graphic. So um, lots of really good options in those label dies. Okay, so then we are going to die cut one more layer um, of these. We're going to take this next step up and we are going to cut it from some gold curl paper. And then we will, it will be time to put this card together. That's too small, okay. And hopefully we don't run too far over the four o'clock mark. I'll certainly try. Um, but just bear with me if I go a little bit over. Okay. <laughs> you guys are funny about the labels. <laughs> don't need the labels, don't need the labels. <laughs> Only get them if you think you'll use them, of course. Okay. Yeah, the um, taping the these together, um, I'm pretty sure I just um, got that info from my Jennifer McGuire video. Okay, so then we have this beautiful label sentiment. I think we're done die cutting, but I will leave my die cut machine there just in case. Okay, so really, we're at the point where it is time to put this card together. Okay, so I have um, a landscape top folding A2 card, A2 size card base from white cardstock. And I went ahead and I also pre die cut. I did prep this one thing. I pre die cut the stitched scallop rectangles, just this largest one from white and that same coordinating gold paper. Um, and we are going to add these to the front first. So I added foam tape to the back of the larger rectangle just to give some nice added dimension to this card. Okay. So we're gonna place this one on here first. And I might have to, my hair might get a little bit in this um, as I line this up so it's not totally crooked on the card. Let go, there we go. Okay. There we go. It's probably a little crooked, but that's okay. <laughs> and then we're just going to add some liquid glue just in dots to the back of the gold version. Okay. We're just gonna tuck that inside, kind of scooch them together. I see I did not do like a great job of gluing the pink layer onto the white. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of, a little bit of rework there. Okay. So then we are going to use some foam tape on the back of 
the sentiment piece. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead. Oops, and I'm doing that off camera. Sorry, guys. Line that up. Okay, and then we're going to add home tape to the back of this because as all, as we all believe here at Pink Fresh Studio, thanks to Miss Laura Basson, that dimension is life. And while I am starting to fuss around with where all of the elements are going to go, I wanted to remind you guys that craft hour is this coming weekend. And we had a little bit of a change in our schedule. And the lovely Laura Basson has stepped up to the plate and she is going to be joining us again on Saturday. So at um, it is at, I think, noon. Eastern time, so 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, which is Pink Fresh time. That is when Miss Laura Basson and Jeff will be um, hanging out together and crafting together live. Oh, this glue is just um, Connect glue or the Lawn Fun glue tube, all of that glue, it's the same thing. And I just put it into a um, Doris bottle with a micro tip on it. Okay, so now, Let's figure out where we're going to place our flowers. So I definitely like that guy right there. The yellow. Okay. We'll probably kind of tuck this one in here a little. All right. I'm just going to do that. Okay. I think that is a good general fill. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down some flowers first. Oh, I'm glad you guys are looking forward to craft hour. That's great. Me too. Okay, and I'm just going to use some liquid glue on the flowers because it gives me a little bit of time to move them around and make sure that I get them right where I want them to go. But then once that glue, just glue dries, it will be there for good. Okay. All right, I'm liking this so far. Okay, and let's get that pink guy in there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get the sentiment glued down. Um, I am gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to the back of the foam. Um, because it will give me a little bit of extra time to make sure that I like the placement on this guy. Okay. And then go ahead and get a little glue on here and tuck it in. Okay. Well, Loving how this is turning out, you guys. I wasn't so sure. I was, wasn't for sure of what I would think of it, but I am actually really enjoying it. So I want this leaf to tuck in there. I agree, Emma. I would 100% be lost without foam, without foam tape. Okay. I'm going to zhuzh this a little bit more. Okay. There's that leaf. Let's see here. Mm, maybe the smaller ones here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. Yes, I like it like that too. Okay. Yes, it's gonna certainly be a fun. I think they're doing a love themed craft hour. If I, I think, I mean, he, you know, he, Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna do the lighter toned 
leaf over here. Yeah, and then we'll do this guy over here. Perfect. Okay, let's tuck this guy in here. Maybe not in there. Maybe over here. There we go. That's so much better. Okay. Look at that, you guys. Okay, I will use the rest of these flowers at a different date. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put on some crystals. And then um, this card is finished. Okay, so today we are using the crystals. And I'm actually just going to use clear today. Oh, I'm glad you, oh yeah, it does kind of look like it's exploding out of a picture frame. That's a great, that's a great like description. I love that. Okay, so let's just put some clear crystals on here today because we've got so much color in the flowers and the leaves. So let's just stick with clear. And we're gonna just do a couple little trios of them in each little corner where there's some open space. All right. Okay. Just get this glued down. Oh, real quick, I'm gonna clean this tip off. Got a little wily when I was gluing down those flowers and they kind of got glue everywhere. There, that's much better. This guy does not want to pick up. There we go. Oh, that one is too close to that leaf. There we go. <laughs> oh, I think Jeff just can. I think Jeff just confirmed that love is in the air on Craft Hour um, this Saturday. So definitely going to want to catch that. Um, yeah, this will, the replay will be available um, not too long after we end the show. Sometimes it takes a little bit for YouTube to get it back up on the channel and all of the comments and everything in there. Um, so there, we are done. And that is our lovely little card today with um, the Friendship Bloom stamp set. So I am going to go ahead and get my camera switched over real quick while we wait for um, Heather to pick a winner. Oh, and someone asked, this is just a jewel picker. I have a couple of different kinds um, that I use to pick up the jewels to just make it easier to put them on your card. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my video switched around real quick. Okay. Oh, shoot. I just moved one of my crystals that's not dry yet. That's okay. Fixed it. It's fine. Okay. And so now I'm just waiting for. Um, uh, okay. I think someone is maybe asking about the difference between the crystals and the jewels. So the crystals that I use today are diamond shaped. Um, so they have a flat top, not a flat back, and they are clear. Now our jewels mix are flat backed, are flat backed jewels and they have an iridescent finish to them. So that's the difference between the two. And it looks like congratulations to Vicki Davis. You have won today's $15 gift card. So yay, a little bit of a shopping spree for you. You're going to um, email me to claim your prize. That email is leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. There is no H on the end of my name. Um, just give me two to three days to um, reply back just due to the volume of emails that I get. I get to them as soon as I possibly can. So congratulations, Vicki. I hope that you guys um, have uh, loved our new release so far. Don't forget that there is a block hub going on. So be sure to hop along. There's a ton of inspiration. There's a prize at every single stop. So there are $25 gift cards up for grabs on all of our team members and guests. And then there is a grand prize giveaway on our blog, on our Instagram posts, and on our YouTube video, um, all introducing the new release. So don't forget to do those if you haven't yet. 
So other than that, you guys, I think that is everything that I have for you. I'm just going to make sure I haven't missed any last minute questions. I think we're good. So uh, join us again on Thursday at um, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for Facebook Live with Heather. And then, of course, Craft Hour uh, with Jeff Lindbergh on Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time with the lovely Laura Basson as our guest this week. So we uh, were excited for all, um, all of the upcoming lives to see what they create. All right, guys, that's everything that I have for you. I hope you guys, hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday and we'll talk to you later. Bye.